Welcome to Electra Online. So our eyes aren't good enough to see very small things such as viruses, bacteria, and the structure of cells. So if we want to see that, we need some sort of optical instrument. And so the first thing that comes to mind is perhaps a magnifying glass. But there are limitations to a magnifying glass. It does help if you need some help seeing very tiny things, like let's say sometimes you have a splinter in your finger, you want to see the splinter, you use a magnifying glass and that's typically good enough. But there are limitations. So what are those limitations? Well, first of all, imagine again that we want to see a very small object. So O is used for object. The arrow here is the height of the object. And we have to place it about 25 centimeters away, which is the near point of most... Oh, I forgot a T there. Near point uh, for most people's eyes. And that gives us an angle of resolution. The angle subtended by the size of the object and the distance away that the object is from the eye. And typically, of course, there's a limitation on our vision that the smallest angle of resolution is determined by the wavelength of light and the diameter of the optical instrument, well, in this case, the eye, the opening to the eye, that's about four millimeters when fully opened up. And so that allows us to see things that are at uh, the smallest objects, about 50 micrometers across, which is pretty small. But what if we put a magnifying glass here. So what that allows us to do, it allows us to take the object that used to be at the near point of 25 centimeters and move it closer. Let's say we move it right there about where the focal point is of the magnifying glass of the lens. So that means that the object distance is equal to the focal length of the lens. Now that will be the limitation, we'll get into that in just a moment. But it allows us to make an image that is far greater and if we place that image at the what we call near point, 25 centimeters away, and let's go ahead and again indicate that, that this is 25 centimeters from there to there. Then, um, then you can see that the image is now much larger than the original object, and so you can see that the angle that image subtends is much greater than the angle that the object would sub subtend if the object was placed there. And essentially the magnification of the mag magnifying glass would be the ratio of these two angles. So here we calculate, so the magnification, and let's see here, you know what I'm going to do, this is not right, I'm going to put theta prime and theta, that is a better way of looking at it. So it's going to be the ratio of the size of the angle subtended by the image divided by the angle subtended by the object, if the object was there. Now, uh, what we can then see is that the angle theta prime is essentially this height to this distance. Now since we don't know that we can take this triangle right here because these are similar triangles and we can simply take the height of the object divided by the focal length of the lens. So theta prime is going to be the height of the object divided by the focal point of the lens or the focal length of the lens and then the theta here is going to be the ratio of the height of the object divided by the 25 centimeters. And then you can see that the, the height of the object cancels. We then multiply by the inverse and we end up with the magnification being 25 centimeters divided by the focal length of the lens. And let's say, for example, that the focal length is equal to 5 centimeters. Then we divide 25 centimeters by 5 centimeters and we get a magnification of 5. With other words, we can now see objects that are one-fifth the size, maybe down to 10 micrometers with a magnifying glass like that, and still see things relatively clearly. So can we then make a lens that even has a smaller focal length, like two centimeters, one centimeter? The smaller we make the focal length, the larger magnification. The problem with magnifying glasses is that once you begin to make the focal length smaller and smaller and smaller, it is very difficult to shape the lens in such a way that you have a clear vision across the entire lens and things become very blurry very easily. It's, there's only one little spot then at that point where things are clear. And so magnifying glass have that limit where you can have the focal length much smaller than 5 centimeters and still be practical. So that's where your limitation is going to be with the magnifying glass. So we need something else, something that can, either, that can even magnify things better than a magnifying glass. So if one magnifies is, magnifying glass is good, let's put two of them together in a particular arrangement such that you can see things even smaller than that. And that arrangement will then of course be a microscope and we'll get to that in just a few videos. But at least now you understand 
why a magnifying glass does have that limitation. It does magnify things. You can see small objects appear bigger and therefore you can see smaller things, a little bit more structure perhaps, just some basic structure in a cell with a good magnifying glass. But again, the limitations are that you can shape the lens such that you have a nice range across the diameter of that, that, um, that magnifying glass to see things clearly. So a microscope at that point will be better. And you'll see in just a moment why that is. Okay, so when you say bigger, actually the, what happens is as the focal length gets smaller, the lens becomes more bulgy like that. It, becomes, it bulges more and more. And the problem is when you begin to bulge the lens like that, it is hard to get the same magnification across the lens. Because of the shape of the lens, things become blurry over a larger portion of the lens. And so trying to make a smaller focal length really is difficult in making the lens in such a way you can still see through it and see things clearly. So there's limitations to the... I understand that, mm -hmm. but why? Ah! <laughs> why does it have to get thicker? Yeah. Oh, because if you go back to the lens maker's equation, it's the radius of curvature that allows you the focal length. So the, the smaller the radius of curvature, the larger, or I should say, the stronger the lens, and therefore the smaller the focal length. So it all has to do with the, the radius of curvature. Stronger the lens? Strong, we call that a stronger lens. Yeah, it magnifies more. So we call those stronger lenses. Make it sound like that, you know, you use a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Not that type of strength. <laughs> All right.